Hey YouTube, it's Wisconsin Shoe Guy here, and I welcome to a very special shoe battle. Uh, I decided today that what I would do is I would actually do a shoe battle where I'm looking at nothing but soles. And today uh, I've limited this to the battle of the fiddleback. Now, what is a fiddleback waist and, and why does that matter in a shoe? And uh, so I've, I've chosen seven shoes out of my collection uh, that we're going to talk about. And um, we're gonna talk about some of the machine made first um, and then we'll get into the uh, hand welted um, ones um, after that. But uh, a fiddleback waist or a beveled waist um, is when you have a, um, a support piece that's actually embedded in the sole that actually creates a curvature of the sole. So you can see that with the way the light hits the sole. Now this is a Loke Parliament and um, this is part of their um, uh, Loke 1880 export grade uh, range. And um, they have this um, very slight bevel on the, on the waist here. Um, you can see the sole itself, and I apologize that it's dirty, um, but that happens as we all know, um, is, uh, has a channel cut here for Goodyear welting, um, has a um, 270 degree welt, and a, uh, what they consider to be a, a, a small sole on, or heel on the, sh on the shoe. Uh, it has, um, this is something that they call handmade, but this is not what um, like a shoe aficionado would consider to be handmade. It, as I understand it, this is not hand welted, nor is it hand lasted. So, uh, and those are the two things that I use when I describe what handmade is. Um, so, but you can see here the, um, the thickness of the, um, of the heel stacks, um, you know, and these are leather heel stacks, but I mean, they're relatively thick and, um, you know, but there is uh, some nice finishing uh, they do the uh, the edge finish here. You can see where it's beveled and then it's flat and they actually do the iron. So it has the ridge both on the bottom and on the top. Now that's machine work, okay? So that's machine work that you'll see on the higher end Goodyear welted shoes and um, uh, good machine welted shoes. Um, and, and that's what that is there. And then you can see, I mean, with the last and stuff like this, this is a very fine shoe. Uh, it's not inexpensive, but it's also not what they would consider to be top grade uh, in a, across the entire shoe industry. But it's a very fine shoe, and I'm very happy to have it. Um, and of course, it's navy, uh, which makes it a very unique part of my collection. So moving on from there, I am going to go to Meslin. Uh, now, Meslin is a, a shoe company out of Spain. And take a look at this welt. Now you can see here, they actually have, they must have something underneath here that they wrapped the sole around. So as you can see the, the way the light hits this, it's flat on this side, it's flat on that side, and then it goes up here, but then they almost looks like they ironed a piece there. Now this sole is also painted, uh, which is nice. So there's a nice patina across it. You can see that the, the wear um, is definitely wearing down on what they did color. Uh, which is normal, right? Um, but uh, you'll see how that uh, that operates there. Now it's also quite pointed, um, so the last is going to be different. Now this is also a loafer, uh, and it's more of a whole cut loafer, so one piece of leather. Um, and then they did this really nice apron here as well. But that's all part of the upper. So let's focus on the sole. Um, you look at the heel. You've got your three nails, three nails here, two nails here. You've got your diagonal line on the heel there. Uh, this is also a 270 degree welt, meaning that it stops at the heel. Okay? And so the heel is also um, narrow into it. So if you look at both of these shoes side by side, this heel is wider, certainly wider compared to the shoe. This shoe, you can actually see that the heel of the shoe, the foot, actually goes over the heel of the shoe, whereas here is actually still a little bit wider. So this, even though it is a 270 degree welt, could be a 360. Um, it's just about wide enough. So that's, that's a, a difference that you'll see. So, so what happens when you go up a grade and, and you start looking at something a little bit finer? This is a TLB Artista line. Uh, this I believe is the 136 um, Adelaide. And take a look at this. Now this is a very narrow heel. You can see that there's quite a lot more give there. So if you look at this compared to the Meslin, all right, it's even narrower. 
And if you look at it this way, it's a lot smaller, a lot smaller. And um, uh, this has a very, very narrow waist. This part here is the waist. So this actually, and this actually comes in quite a bit. And then this bevel, instead of a little bevel here, actually is a bevel all the way up to the top here. And that's where they start calling it a fiddle back. Okay? So um, I like to, I refer to all of them as, as a fiddle back. And I don't know that there's a specific rule in place. This is just where you start seeing it in the literature different between bevel and fiddleback, I think that the shoemakers don't want to oversell it when they have kind of a minor fiddle or a minor bevel. Uh, but this is definitely a fiddleback waist. And you'll see as I get into some of the higher end shoes, um, this may still be the winner today because this is so finely done. TLB on the Artista line, I mean, these soles are legendary. Now, if you look here, this is a single sole and it is a single sole all the way through. So they wrap this around, but it is not carved down. And I think that that's something that's interesting to look at because as you get into some of the other shoes, uh, you do start to see a little bit of that. So again, TLB, and we're gonna use this one as the measure moving forward. So we'll put the, uh, the Loke Parliament, and this is a Meslin Cortana. We'll put those to the side now and just consider this to be the, the judge uh, by which all others are, are, are set. Now. This shoe is um, going to cost around $400. Um, so technically is probably the least expensive of all the shoes that I have here. Uh, but it is a um, very high quality shoe and uh, nothing but uh, fabulous reviews um, by myself and anybody who's reviewed these shoes um, has been a real fan. So uh, definitely um, solid there. So now as we, as we move on, so um, the Loke is English. Um, the uh, Meslin is Spanish, the TLB is Spanish, but now we're going to move uh, to a different country for the last four shoes, and this country is Italy. So we have a Barbanera. Now when you look at Barbanera, um, first of all, this is a, um, a Kudu shoe. So if you look at the, uh, and I, by the way, I just um, did some, uh, uh, conditioning on the uh, heels and on the on the wing cap. Uh, so this is not a different kind of leather. I will eventually condition that as well. But this is a waxy kudu, so um, putting any kind of uh, conditioner on it was kind of a risk. So I wanted to see how it how it lasted over some time. But I think it's doing pretty fine. And so I'll do the rest of it to to make it match. But I like the spectator look too a little bit. So um, but this has a very thick um, and um, this is also something that they call Goodyear welted. And I don't know whether or not Barbanera actually does hand welting with these or whether or not they um, uh, do it all on a machine. It is very finely done. If this is done on a machine, they do it very, very well. You can see that they have some patterns on here. By the way, Barbanera is very similar to like a pirate kind of thing. They're very famous for boots. They've kind of got an edgy style to them. And um, this shoe is no different. And uh, so they got the little X there. Um, just a really kind of cool vibe with this company. So I'm pretty excited about it. Um, they've got the nails up here um, for protecting the, the toe. Um, and you can see that they've done not only color, but they've also um, carved out um, this pattern up here toward the uh, top, the fore, forefront of the shoe, and then the waist um, you can see here. So let's take a look at the two waists comparatively. And as I said, we may end this with the TLB being the winner because it is a very, very fine waist. So um, uh, it is narrower and the heel, uh, I'm just gonna say that that's comparable in size. I don't think that it's actually smaller and I don't have a, um, I don't have a measuring tape, uh, but it looks like the TLB in my eye looks like it's a little bit narrower, um, but a little bit longer. Um, so, but uh, for, for all intents and purposes, um, we're going to judge the sole based on the waist itself. And I'm going to say the waist winner is the TLB. Now, this one also, if you look at it, is the same thickness at the front as it is at the waist in terms of the sole itself. Um, and uh, very nice job there. Um, and also, if you look at this heel stack, um, you know, just a few layers um, and uh, also very well executed. I like the pattern along the outside here. And you can see that it does 
go over the heel, also with a 270, and they're all 270 welds. Uh, but this is just a little bit tighter, and, and I like that. So uh, very, very good shoe. Um, very lucky to have it. Um, and these are going to run around 550 okay? um, euros, not dollars. So $610. Okay? So let's go to the next shoe. This is an Enzo Benafe. It is made on the 946 last, and it is um, a very, very nice shoe. When you look here at the fiddleback, uh, it's very pronounced. You can see that there's a little bit of wear right here, and that's just because of the wear I wear the shoe. Um, so it's not quite over that edge, um, which is a little unfortunate, but uh, just based on where they painted it, right? Um, so, but it's a, uh, it's quite, it's quite a nice, uh, nice style, nice pattern. The heel, you can see single nails. Okay. Now some shoe manufacturers like to have a lot of nails. Um, some manufacturers like to be very minimalistic and not use a lot of nails. Um, that's a, that's a d design thing. And I like it because it's, um, you know, it, it's, uh, it, it gives the, them an opportunity to create differences on the shoe. And you see, they've done some, some uh, texture on the outside of the heel here. And then again, at the bottom, that's actually where the rubber uh, for the, the top lift is, that's the heel. And then they have the rubber there and then they have the, the combination piece on top of the rubber, right? So uh, that, that is the way that looks there. Now I'm gonna compare that so this is the TLB, you have the same thing. Now the difference is TLB actually sanded this down and had it rounded here, right? And then is straight here. So, and again, that could be done with a sanding machine or it could be done by hand. I don't know. I don't believe TLB is made by hand at all. I believe this is entirely machine done. So, um, but uh, very, very high quality. And um, they, you know, they're a bespoke maker and they happen to have a ready to wear line. And this is the high end of their ready to wear line. So they have like a main line and then they have the Artista line. And this is Artista, which is their, their high end. So again, you look at the waist, the TLB, the Enzo. Again, very, very close, but the TLB has it. It has a tighter waist. Let's look at the heels and Again, you know, as a lot of government workers, I know that's close enough for government work. Uh, there's a little bit more curvature on the heel with the TLB, uh, where this is a little bit straighter. But I'm going to say that uh, the TLB is going to continue to take this uh, from a contest perspective and a shoe battle because that is just a higher waist and it's narrower, higher right here. So we're going to keep it there. So Enzo Benafe, really, really good shoe, but like Barbanera. Uh, we're going to put that to the side. So now, TLB versus Palo Scafora. So now we have the carved sole. And of course, the carved sole is very nice. But when you take the carving aside and you look at the fiddleback, where is that fiddleback different? Well, that is very similar. Uh, you know, the heel shape is different, right? The combination heel um, is got more rubber on the Scafora, uh, which uh, should translate to more traction, uh, but it's, uh, it's not necessarily. Now you can see TLB has the, uh, the nails on the heel, has the, the, the four, four corners of uh, three, three nails. Now this though, on the, on the Scafora, this has three nails, then it has three nails, then it has three nails again, then one nail, one nail, and I'm just making sure, and then it has two nails. So this is a, I'm sorry, the lighting is not just picking this up really well, but uh, this is a, um, a different heel design. Now what's also very cool about this is this little bevel work here. Now, by the way, Paula Scafora, totally made by hand. Um, they say good year welted, but they're, it's just the type of stitching that they're doing and the way that they create the welt. Uh, they do do the welting and the lasting by hand. Um, and this is a, um, just a, a very fine, uh, basically hand carved, hand sanded. Um, what's interesting is they have like a little edge here along the top of the welt where the welt meets the sole and they've sanded it down. So it has a little bit of a pattern on it. So I can, you can kind of see there. 
which is very fine, a very fine detail for very fine shoes. Um, and, uh, you know, they do, they do a really nice job here. Now you look at the, um, the heel stack here, the, le the leather heel stack, and what's interesting is that it's narrower, it goes to wider. That's an interesting thing that they do there, which I think is very, uh, it's a fascinating level of detail. So again, we look at this and darn it, the TLB is still going in a little bit narrower and just a little bit more curvature on the heel going in. So I'm gonna say that we're gonna give that one to TLB. So pretty exciting stuff here. Let's get to our finalists. TLB versus Antonio Meccarello. Meccarello, okay? And here we look at it, and now you've got two that are very narrow, um, but um, you look at the um, heels themselves, Meccarello is smaller. Uh, the angle has it, so it has a little bit more leather. The nail work is on the heel is almost identical. The fiddleback waist is about the same height. Now, Macariello has created this nice little carved area in here uh, for the pattern um, and has the, uh, the fiddleback all the way to that um, and then has this narrow, narrow fiddleback as well. Here, uh, there's no carving on the front, so there's no pattern. So they just didn't take the time to do that one level of detail or to paint that. But um, the sole itself, the, the waist itself, is a little bit narrower. But when we look at here, let's look at this, you can see that this, this is going in quite a bit here and then is going out. So you have this amount, which is like Zo. Okay? And I'm gonna put that, that is very, very close. Now, I would say up here where it's the narrowest on the Meccariello, uh, it's um, about the comparable. Now this goes a little bit narrower below it, uh, which definitely gives you the feeling that it is narrower. So I, I'm i gonna have to give this one to the Meccariello. Um, just a very, very well-made shoe, also completely handmade. Uh, now this one is uh, an example where it is a double sole and then it's carved down. Um, at the waist to a single sole. So you see how they do that? That is just brilliant handwork right there. They also notch in on the waist, um, which uh, I think is really cool. So the heel is actually wider than the waist. And that is not something that's done even here. That's a smooth line. It's actually a little bit of a bump out here, if I'm being honest. So uh, different work there. Again, with the Scafora, um, that is all single, Single sole, single sole, all the way through. Same with the Enzo. So when it comes to the uh, sole and the waist, the battle of the fiddleback waists goes to Antonio. Uh, this is just a brilliant job, uh, brilliant handwork, and um, very, very classic, well-made, handmade shoe. Uh, why by Yosol? Uh, if you're uh, looking to pick up a pair, Yosol has this as one of their uh, private labels and uh, they do a great job. You can also um, buy direct from uh, meccariello.it. Uh, um, and uh, I am not, this is not a paid sponsorship or anything like that. I'm just a fan and uh, just uh, really like these shoes. So uh, thanks for watching. Hope you found that interesting and we'll catch up soon. Take care.